Hello. Today we're going to talk about progesterone. And this is the second day of a five-day series where we're going to highlight certain hormones, including estradiol or estrogens, which was yesterday. So check out that video. Today will be progesterone. And the next three days we'll do FSH, LH, and testosterone. So the reason I'm doing this is because as a woman and a female, obviously, and as a physician who cares for a lot of women in this kind of middle age group, you know, from 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond, many of us are going through perimenopause and menopause, including myself. And that shift really got my attention. And I really feel there needs to be more conversation around not only the highlighting what can lifestyle do, but where should we look into medications such as hormone replacement therapy? And is it safe? And when should we should consider it? And when is it not okay? So anyway, but before we dive into the hormone replacement stuff, I thought it would be important just to kind of lay the the groundwork of understanding what's going on in our body on a regular basis. So um, for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Dr. Lori Marbus. I am a board certified family and lifestyle medicine physician. I'm licensed in all 50 states and also DC. So I'm happy to have you here. And if you'd like to learn more about myself, Dr. Marbus, please check out drmarbus.com. And I think you'll find the link somewhere on here. And in addition, we run a healing kitchen with uh, Brittany Giroudi, where we meet weekly. She provides delicious whole food plant-based recipes. And I answer medical questions. I do workshops every month with eBooks and all of those recordings are free to you once you join as a member. So moving on to the star of the show today is progesterone. So let me pull up my notes and um, interesting thing. Let me grab this. Here we go. Oops. Wrong browser. There we go. All right. So first of all, you know, progesterone is really kind of a, a fascinating hormone that it does much more than just help with reproduction, right? So let's dive into the mini roles, <clears throat> especially as we approach menopause or in this perimenopausal phase, because it can be really beneficial and we'll highlight in particular sleep here in a minute. But let's start back to reproductive system, right? So when you think about progesterone, many times you think about pregnancy and reproduction, but it is absolutely crucial for pregnancy. So it's kind of this superhero of pregnancy, right? It prepares the uterus for a fertilized egg, and then it helps maintain the pregnancy and keeps the uterine muscles relaxed to prevent um, early disruptions or problems. And then it's also important for menstrual cycle regulation, right? So progesterone levels rise after ovulation, meaning release of the egg, balancing estrogen and getting the uterus ready again for that possible pregnancy. In addition to this, it has a really interesting metabolic effect, right? So it can be a metabolic boost, right? So progesterone helps manage carbohydrates, your lipid and protein metabolism. It aids in storing glycogen or glucose in the liver. It increases insulin levels when need be and influences fat storage and protein metabolism, which is really important during pregnancy, especially. And then let's talk about a central nervous system. We want to talk about our brain, right? So brain health and our mood. So many times as we enter closer to perimenopause and menopause, we find that we have more anxiety, difficulty sleeping. Well, let's talk about progesterone just a little bit. Progesterone is great for your brain health, right? It supports the brain by promoting what we call myelination, which protects the neurons. It's like putting on a coat around your nerves and even helping regulate mood. Its metabolites basically interact with what we call GABA receptors, which help calm the brain and reduce anxiety. Next, let's talk about the immune system, right? So it is what we call an immune system modulator. So progesterone plays a role <clears throat> in modulating or um, putting the brakes on the immune system's response, right? So especially during pregnancy. So basically it helps um, the mother's body from rejecting the fetus by increasing the production of what they call progesterone induced blocking factor or, I, or PIBF. And that promotes anti-inflammatory cytokines. Fascinating. Next, let's talk about our digestive health, right? So progesterone affects the digestive system too. So it slows down your gastrointestinal motility, right? It reduces the gallbladder's response to stimulants, and it may support um, GERD or gastroesophageal reflex by reducing the esophageal sphincter pressure, okay? So now let's really talk about sleep because this is one of the main problems or concerns I have from women as we 
one, maybe they don't even realize they're in perimenopause or maybe they're menopausal or postmenopausal. And sleep is a really big issue. So if someone is complaining of fatigue, the number one thing I ask about is, well, how's your sleep? And so many times they have such a disrupted sleep pattern, they don't even know what's normal anymore. It's kind of like when you ask someone, you know, they're complaining of digestive issues, like, well, how many times do you poop? They're like, oh, I don't know, twice a week. <laughs> how about two or three times a day? That's normal. Twice a week or once a week is not. So, and trust me, there are many people who walk around with a little poop. Anyway, I, I got sidetracked. Moving on. So let's let's talk about improving sleep quality, right? So sleep promotion in particular. So progesterone is known for its sleep promoting effects, particularly in postmenopausal women. Studies have shown that intranasal progesterone can help um, improve sleep quality by increasing total sleep time and reducing the time it takes to fall asleep. Um, when you compare that with other treatments, there was a randomized trial that both um, there's a different type of progesterone called digesterone and micronized progesterone, which is typically what is prescribed for hormone replacement therapy. Um, both of these improved quality of sleep, but the micronized progesterone had fewer side effects. And then there was a systemic review and meta-analysis confirmed that micronized progesterone improves various sleep parameters, especially in um, postmenopausal women. And it's highlighted to see the improving onset of sleep and overall sleep quality. And I will say for myself, I always thought it was a pretty light sleeper, worsening in my later 40s. I'll be 54 in October. And my menopause, perimenopause halting of periods really started last November, although I've had a period since then, starting again. But what was interesting, when I started, I chose to embrace hormone replacement therapy, I feel like a whole new human, fabulous, um, was how much my sleep quality improved. And, you know, I was sleeping enough hours, but I was waking up frequently in the middle of the night. And I will say this has definitely made a difference in my sleep quality outside of the fact that I was having like one night sweat at like 3.30 in the morning. It was like, you could feel it come on before the sweats even started. That was really annoying. But the I mean, it wasn't super severe, but it was enough to get me, and it, it was enough to get my attention and disrupt my sleep. But anyway, I sleep like a baby now. It's amazing. So it absolutely, consider just in of one anecdotal notation here on this little um, explanation. But if you're having trouble sleeping, and even if you're someone who doesn't, a candidate for estradiol or an estrogen replacement in your home, you might very well be for progesterone, even if you're older than what they would say is the opportune window or the opportunity to start HRT. So definitely speak to your doctor about it. <clears throat> so let's talk about menopause and the role of progesterone, because just like in, you know, estrogen, the progesterone will decrease. So you'll get symptom relief, it'll help with relief of hot flashes, night sweats, and mood swings because it balances the declining levels of estrogen. It helps in bone health, right? Decreasing your risk of osteoporosis. Of course, we talked about it helping with cognitive um, roles and mood. So you definitely want to think about that, how it could help with depression or anxiety if you've noticed a lot of more mood swings as you've entered into this phase. And there's an interesting um, notation around heart health. It's kind of complex, but there seems to be a balance. If there's a balance between progesterone and estrogen, it can help support heart health during menopause. So all of that to say, progesterone is an important hormone. And yes, menopause is not a disease. It's a stage of life that if you live long enough, you will go through. However, it doesn't mean you have to suffer silently. Um, the research is definitely coming out saying that so many more women are absolute candidates for HRT. And I'm not saying I'm still a lifestyle medicine physician, but I am also a family medicine physician and a woman who has suffered these things and had benefit of this type of thing. And honestly, ladies, we should be having this conversation more openly and not be afraid or ashamed to ask for help when you're feeling miserable. Um, don't suffer in silence. It's unnecessary. So anyway, so there's the progesterone. It's got all sorts of lovely things for reproductive health, metabolism, sleep, brain health, heart health, bone health. There you go. So we have talked about the estrogens, we talked about the progesterone, and now tomorrow we'll talk, I'm not sure which one yet, maybe the testosterone, maybe FSH, LH together. I don't know. We'll see which one sounds good. 
But there we are. And again, I want to say thank you for joining me today. As always, I'm sending you um, gratitude, joy, peace, and love, and above all, healing, because we all need a little bit more of that in our lives every day. So thanks again for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.